All right, so today what we're going to do is I'm going to go over how to do this part. And basically this document I found on the internet. It um, helps you to prepare for the SOLIDWORKS certified um, associate. So um, this part right here is what we're going to do. And um, this is it. And I want to first focus on uh, this part right here. So it's going to be the metric system. It's going to be AISI 1020 steel. And origin doesn't matter at all because they're going to have you weigh the part um, in grams. And basically, the, the question is, what is the overall mass of the part in grams? And then you need to um, look at this, and then the answers are uh, farther down here. So you want to do this problem until you get the right answer. When you get the right answer, you know that you nailed it. So as far as starting, you know, if we don't have a dual monitor, I really recommend that you kind of split your window with the um, with the problem on one side of your screen and the SOLIDWORKS on the other house, kind of like I've done here. So first off, I'm going to go change into metric system right here. As far as the materials go, right click edit material. And then um, by categories, we know we're at steel and mine is going to be AISI 1020, and not the cold rolled one, but this one here. It's a slight difference. So I hit apply. So right off the bat, I got those two things taken care of. So from the front view, I go ahead and draw a line. And when you look at this problem right here, Zoom in a little bit here. When you look at this problem, you know, drawing this looks easy, and this looks easy. This looks a little more difficult here, and this looks pretty easy over here, pretty easy, pretty easy. This area is maybe a little more difficult. So what I have like to do is just pick a line, like for example this 24, and um, just draw it first and go ahead and dimension it so that everything else we draw now is kind of um, to scale. All right, so um, at this point, I've drawn from here up to here. I know there's another line that's straight, and it's at 29. I'm trying to place my dimensions really carefully so that it's kind of like the drawing. Okay, now I use temporary lines sometimes. I use a center line for that. For example, um, I know that this temporary line is going to be 5 down from the top. And I know there's a line that goes up here. And, um, you know, if we want to stick with the plan, we could go left click and left click and then place it over here. And at that point, trim tool is a, about five different ways to trim. The corner is a, a good way. You want to click what you want to keep. So if I click this and this, I lose that part there. So click, click. So that's how the trim tool works. If you want, you can leave that center line or, or delete it. It doesn't really matter. Um, but I would go ahead and leave it because that way I get the dimensions and things like that. So I got that done. Um, next thing is, let's see. we know that there's going to be dimension that goes from here to this point right there is going to be 24. And then from there, there's going to be a line that goes from here, it goes down somewhere over here, and we know that that line, this line, and then this line right here is going to be B, and B is 57. So I type in 57. All right, 
and we also know that from this point to this line right here is going to be 20 miles here to there. That was going to be 29. All right. Um, then after that, there's definitely a straight line. We don't really know how far there is. I'm going to do another temporary line here and just kind of draw it over here somewhere. Be sure not to get, don't reference anything else like that. Um, but we know that this line right here and this line is going to be 19. And again, I'm trying to place the dimensions as they are over here. That way at the end when I go to scan everything, I can make sure I got it right. So here's the three-point art command. There's a couple of different choices here. Um, first mouse click, second mouse click, third mouse click. So you should practice these and make sure you're, um, you're familiar. But I'll click this one right here. And I'll go ahead and click this intersection right here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click my mouse kind of up here. And notice right now, it's not drawing the line I want, but if I loop my mouse around, I kind of get what I need. So now I can dimension this. I know that um, R stands for radius, and it's going to be 29. Use my trim command and click what I want to keep. So that's good. I got that. Got that done. Next, we know that there's another line that um, is going to, another line that um, comes off here, and that line, we know that from there to there is going to be 19. Go ahead and trim this up here. And then it says here R5, and there's a tangent icon here. So this here, sketch fillet, if I click on this point here, and I go over here, I would type in 5, and hit Enter. And you can see that it actually did the, the relation automatically. We'll go over how to place that. But notice that there's two there, so that's good. So that's done. Right, and um, let's see, we know that there's a vertical line up here. And we know that um, this vertical line and this vertical line is going to be A. And A is 81. So I'm going to type in 81. All right. We know that there's going to be a 45 degree line that comes off of this. And there's, there's lots of ways to draw this. Um, you could do chamfer, but I'm just kind of doing it. It, it might work well for a beginner. So. But there's definitely faster ways to do this. I think as a beginner, I'm just kind of working my way around the drawing, trying to place my dimensions as I see them, and I think um, I think it's a pretty good strategy. All right, so I know there's going to be another um, line over here, somewhere right around here, and um, <clears throat> that line is going to be from here. So here is going to be 32. And there's another angle here that's 45 degrees. And kind of round in the corner here. Oh, there's one dimension here too. We know that um, 
this point and this point should be seven. So we've got to really make sure that every dimension that we see, we have here. <coughs> like right here and here, I need a seven there too. And as far as the circle goes, the diameter is going to be 14, and it's going to be 14 from there, and it's going to be 14 over from the left. Alright, so I'm looking over here at all these dimensions. I'm just making sure that I got all of them. Looks like I do. And we know that from this line right here to this point is going to be 14. And then we have a line that kind of shoots down. It's going to be at 10 degrees. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is this, this curve right here, this radius of 19 degrees. So if I click the center point arc, this time I'll click um, this one, first click, second click, third click. So first click, second click, and I'll just go like that, third click, and dimension it. It's going to be 19. And so what you want to do now is you can notice over here it has the tangent symbol. And the way you add a relation is you hold down the shift key, hold down shift, left click, left click. You can add relations now. And if I click tangent, it you know really made it look correct and, and solved that problem. So again, that tangent icon there is critical. You have to hold the shift key, not the control key, to get that to work. So you want to double check all of your dimensions. And then after that, if I go over here, we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to extrude it next. All right, notice over here for C right there, that's how far we're going to extrude it. And C is 43, so if I go over here to Features, Extrude, type in 43, Enter. All right, so there it is, looks good. Now if I go to Evaluate, and click Mass Properties, I'm gonna go ahead and find out if it weighs 939.54 in grams. And there it is, 939.54 grams. All right, I'll do the next part on a separate video from this one, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.